After a stunning victory over the Hungarian king at the Battle of Mohi, the Mongols seemed unstoppable. But a year later, the great Khan Ogade died. The Mongols pulled out of Europe and returned home. Over the next 20 years, two more great Khans ascended to the throne. Their conquests continued to expand the empire in the east. Then in 1260, the grandson of Genghis became the next great Khan. His name was Kublai Khan. He would rock the foundations of one of the medieval world's most advanced civilizations, China. This is Shangdu. Remember today as Xanadu, it was once Kublai Khan's great northern capital. From here, he jealously eyed the wealth of southern China's Song Dynasty. He wanted to take it and become emperor of all China. The Song Dynasty had ruled over southern China for more than 300 years and the country was prosperous and well-governed. Kublai Khan knew that the key to victory was capturing a strategic city lying far to the south of Shangdu. It was called Changyong. Changyong was the gateway to the south and the heart of the Song Dynasty's power. Controlling the Han River, a critical access route to cities further along the Yangtze. Capturing Shangyong was Kublai Khan's only hope of becoming emperor of all China. The Mongol horde had to take the city at all costs. Kublai Khan, not content with rule over his own lands, coveted the riches of the Song Dynasty to the south. He ordered his army to the twin cities of Fancheng and Shangyang, confident in his tried and tested tactics. Although Kublai's ultimate target was the fortress of Chongyang, the Mongols would first have to control its sister city of Fancheng.
The Mongols cleared the bridge of its guards and continued their advance in Fancheng. Mongols spotted a fortified Song camp, blocking the road to the Twin Cities. Seeing an opportunity to overwhelm the enemy camp, the Mongols called in their reinforcements. Together, the two detachments would strike the camp from both sides, pincering the Song. Oh, you've got that! Let's go! 
With the Song camp destroyed, the Mongols set in motion their plan to seize the Twin Cities. First, they would meet with an allied force at the gates of Fancheng. This assault force would attack the gates of Fancheng, while the Mongol vanguard would defend the siege weapons firing upon the cities. The Mongols met with the Allied assault force at the gates of Fancheng. As the Allied force charged the gates, the Mongol vanguard moved to defend the siege weapons from Song attacks. burned the bridge to Shanyang, preventing a direct assault on the fortress. The assault on Fancheng was met with a barrage of gunfire, forcing the Allied army to retreat. Shoot the gate, bad boy! 
With the gates still unbroken and under guard, the Mongols switched strategies and called on a large group of reinforcements to bring in their mobile camp. The Mongols would besiege the mighty twin cities. The Mongols rallied a force on the bridgehead. The Mongol strategy was to hold the city's bridges so that no Song forces could escape and no reinforcements could enter.
Securing the second bridgehead, the Mongols were one step closer to blocking off all the escape routes.
The Mongols took up position on the last bridgehead. Seeing that the Mongols were attempting to block the city's escape routes, the Song began planning a counterattack. The Song launched their counterattack on the Mongols holding the bridgeheads. The Mongols had to hold the three bridgeheads against the Song attacks.
Desperate to stop an all-out Mongol assault on their walls, the Song destroyed the remaining bridges to the Twin Cities. Unable to advance, the fortress of Zhangyang remained locked to the Mongols. But with the siege established, the Khan's cause was not yet lost. <laughs> 